On today's episode of the Locked On NHL podcast, the Minnesota Wild are just going to keep winning, right? Right? Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On NHL Podcast. We are your daily NHL podcast, and we are your team each and every day. We thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day as well. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked On NHL is brought to you by FanDuel. New customers can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On today's episode, we will talk about the hot start for the Minnesota Wild and see if it's sustainable as the Wild just continue to rack up wins against quality opponents. We'll also try to figure out what these Seattle Kraken actually are this year. It seems very all or nothing with either a ton of goals or none at all. And we'll also give you some injury updates on Connor McDavid, Macklin Celebrini, and Arturi Lekkanen on his way back for the Avs as well. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, joined by J.D. Young of Locked on Sharks. And... uh, since we're talking about the uh, the home squad, the one that I get a chance to cover <laughs> on a daily basis. I'll come in for the second ad break. Just let me know when you're ready. So. <laughs> well, let, I, I think this would be fun for, for you to just pepper me with the questions, and I'll, I'll do my best to try to answer whether or not uh, what we're seeing at 8-1-2 is, uh, is something that can continue. I mean, we going into the season, right, we thought this team – Probably fighting for a wild card spot, and they are have started out like insanely hot this year. Uh, what do you think is the biggest factor for the wild just being? Uh, are, are the wild a wagon? Uh, like, what is what do you think is the biggest factor for this team uh, being so good? I think there are a lot of different things that have just come together to allow this Minnesota Wild team to be as good as it is. Considering that the penalty kill for the Wild right now is third worst in the league at about 66%. Same problem as last year, but John Hines, with the full offseason to work, uh, put in some really solid structure for this team and also did a lot of work with just the mindset and the mentality of this group as they take the ice every night. Last year, it seemed like any time something went wrong for the Minnesota Wild, that led to losses, where the first mistake that you make is enough to just throw everything out of whack. This year, the Wild have handled adversity incredibly well. Started the season after a uh, quick uh, couple of games at home. They go on the road for seven. Seven straight road games, and the Wild only lost two of those games. They went 5-1-1 and on the trip. And it was a combination of playing really good defense, getting really good goaltending. But I think the biggest thing that surprised me so far this year, JD, is how disciplined this wild team is. The last th- That's wild, yeah, man. it's it's not weird. It's wild. Uh, the last three seasons before this year, the Wild were in the top five in penalty minutes every season, and they routinely hmm. came close to hitting the thousand penalty minutes mark, which is a lot. This year, this year they're at the bottom of the list. They have not been putting themselves in position to beat themselves this year like they have in previous seasons. They're making other teams earn it when those situations arise. The biggest difference, in addition to that, I think, is the goaltending. Philip Gustafson yeah. has been fantastic so far this year, and uh, he has put a couple of really good performances together after that clunker against the flyers. Goaltending solves a lot of problems. If you get good, yeah, if you get good goaltending, it just does the job. Yeah. And you wonder too, like, cause especially with 
you know, it's Mark Andre Fleury's expected his last season, right? And uh, you're going to do the whole road tour from City, you know, going through a bunch of. But I think Gustafson has kind of quietly been the story of the NHL just because of, uh, like, he was almost like traded this off season. It was seemed like he was very well available. You have just revolve said, who's going to be knocking at the door at some point here to kind of take, uh, you know, take the starters net and kind of be the guy, especially a guy you invested a first round pick in. And Gustafson's, I think kind of maybe proving last year was, was the season that you forget. Like that was just a blip on the radar and this could be him, you know, and it seemed like uh, he's really kind of solved his game. And then you couple that with uh, some Kaprizov dude who's just going lights out to start the season and is he probably the MVP front runner at the moment. I know we're a month into the season, but like great goaltending and you have a superstar. Uh, it's pretty nice combination. Uh, and then you, like you said, you add some structure. You, you, you guys are starting to kind of fill into their roles um, as you've replaced some of these other, you know, older guys and. Uh, yeah, you can see why the wild could be considered a wagon right now. Uh, I just like the alliteration of wild wagon. Are you worried though? Is this sustainable? I mean, we know the history of the wild, great regular seasons. You get into the playoffs and you get the rug pulled out un- from underneath you. Are you worried? Well, I think if this is going to be a season that's different from what we've seen over the last few years. They're going to have to tighten up those special teams numbers, especially uh, yep. penalty kill. They offer you one Luke Cunning, gently use Luke Cunning to help with that. <laughs> I mean, if he can get the penalty kill by himself up to like seventy percent, I'm I'm all for it. Because penalty kills at like eighty percent right now, buddy. Let's yeah, let's make it work. Um, I think if they can get those numbers tightened up, I don't see any reason why this isn't sustainable because their brand of hockey and John Hines talks about this routinely after games is if things go wrong they just refocus and go back to what they were doing it's not it's not previous seasons where they were trying to be this big hulking like lumbering defensive team that was going to try to slow everybody down they are starting to at least try to play more of a modern style and just play good defense to stifle you. Speaking of stifle, uh, Jonas Brodeen and Jared Spurgeon, in the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs, they held Austin Matthews and the rest of the top six for Toronto to two shots on goal in the like nine minutes on ice that they were out there. So that kind of defense... You're not going to get it probably every night, but the fact that it even is possible is super encouraging. Injuries are the great equalizer. If somebody gets hurt, then you have to figure out how to replace them in the lineup. I think this wild team is better suited to be able to do that than previous years, but they have been mostly healthy so far this season. If they can continue that, I'm I'm starting to put it out there. If they get to the trade deadline and are still in position like this, they're going to make a big move, I think, to mm-hmm. to really take advantage of a Western Conference that outside of Winnipeg and Vegas and probably the Wild is pretty wide open right now. So it makes, yeah. it makes all the sense in the world. If you are in position to make a deep run, do it. Yeah. Going to the smothering defense, uh, the Wild are tied with the Hurricanes at 5-on-5. Only six high danger goals allowed this season. So they're not giving up those quality opportunities uh, that you see that those are what kind of kill you. Um, They're shooting the bejesus out of the puck right now. I think uh, their expected goals are around 19. They've scored 27 five-on-five goals. So uh, this team is performing above expectations right now. But uh, I know I'm very much defenses for nerds, but if you can keep opponents from getting those high-quality opportunities, uh, you're probably going to be feeling pretty good about your chances and just making their life harder. And even if the offense slumps a little bit, I think the defense is 
still going to be quality enough uh, for them to uh, keep this thing going. But yeah, I think Kaprizov is is uh, very much in like Terminator. I'm just out to murder people and get my massive, massive paycheck. And he's well on his way to start the season that way. Yeah. And I, I think the big indicator of a good team is finding a way to win games that are close. And yep. that was the big, that was the big Achilles Learning heel. Learning to win. Learning yep. to win. That was the yes. big Achilles heel of last year's wild team is every time it was a close game, it seemed like they found a new way to lose this year. They're finding all of the, uh, all the ways to win. So I, I certainly hope it continues, but like I said, injuries are the great equalizer and it's a long season. We are just 11 or 12 games into this. There are still 70 more to go. So we'll, I, uh, we'll see. I, for one, welcome our new wild overlords uh, and greet them with uh, joy and uh, encouragement. So, yeah, we uh, we are here for the takeover. Uh, we speaking of takeover, we're going to take over the second segment, trying to figure out what exactly the Seattle Kraken are this season, because I don't think Jekyll and Hyde does it justice with some of the box scores that they have put together, especially recently. It is literally all or nothing for the Kraken offense, and we'll ponder why as we continue today's episode of Locked on NHL after this. We are your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Indeed. We are driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Plus, listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with Fandles, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So you get the hunch in the middle of a game, check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets when you win your first $5 bet. So if you have the Chiefs tonight, uh, you suck for betting the Chiefs, but uh, you would have $150 in bonus bets. So that over at fanduel.com never waste a hunch and make every moment more with fanduel official sportsbook partner of the nfl welcome back to today's episode of locked on nhl once again we are your team each and every day we thank you for making locked on nhl your first listen each and every day as well for your second listen make sure to check out all of the best performers so far with Lockdown Fantasy Hockey, giving you the best lineup predictions and suggestions when your team inevitably hits the injury bug. Lockdown Fantasy Hockey available wherever you listen to your podcasts. JD, what is going on with the Seattle Kraken? Uh, they are weird uh, is the best way to to describe it. Uh, this team can, I don't think, I think cons- the lack of consistency, they're, they're consistently inconsistent because it, this team, it feels like, uh, like you said, they are either scoring a bajillion goals a game or they are not scoring at all. Uh, here's how their season has gone. Lost three to two, win five to four, lost two to nothing, win seven to three, win six to four, win two to one. Lost three to two, lost four to three, lost four to one, win eight to two, and then lost four to one, three to zero, and then they shut out two games in a row. Um, can this team, like, because if you look at the raw numbers, like goals for, like they're like kind of middle of the pack for goals for and goals allowed and stuff, but 
when you're putting up eight an eight spot one night and then you get shut out the next two games like can we spread it around a little bit here guys <laughs> yeah it's it's weird to have a team that is so all or nothing in their performances and listening to our colleague uh, Erica Eliala on Locked on Kraken it, it's we, she is uh, is not a huge fan of the fact that already this season there is kind of a question as to the urgency that this team has played their games with. You're in the first year of a new head coach in Dan Bilesma. You're mm-hmm. trying to get yourself back into the postseason, but you got to, I think, be more consistent. I think consistency is the key for yeah. this team. And you can't go like they're, their last seven games, one and six. And the one was a game in which they scored eight goals against the Montreal Canadiens. But beyond that, they've scored two or fewer in all but one of those games. So can you just be a team that averages like three and a half to four goals a game as opposed to a team as opposed to a team that scores eight and then struggles to score eight in the other six games in that stretch? Yeah, it's they have to be like. The coach has to be going crazy because, uh, again, when you're like when you're doing that type of performance, it's just you never know what you're going to get when you get to the arena. I think that's what makes them so frustrating because, like, you see those performances where you put up eight, and yes, it's against the Canadians and our can, our friends over at Locked On Canadians will tell you like this season's already might you know just been a terrible season below expectations, et cetera, et cetera. But like you, you just you can't be that team. And like they're perf- the weird thing is like they're performing up to expectations, kind of like their goals for expected goals for is like twenty two at five on five. They scored twenty one. Uh, you know the expected goals allowed twenty three and a half, and they've given up nineteen, so they're doing okay defensively there. Uh, again, it goes to the like they're they're just not getting that consistent performance so maybe hopefully you know shane wright as he continues to you know go through and navigate his first full nhl season you see that consistent like you'll start to see some production there um but still it's it's gotta be it's inferior it's just so weird that this team is like one night they look like world beaters and then the next night it's like they can't like yeah you can't score it's yeah Two players that kind of concern me with their performance so far this season. Matty Beneers and Andre Burkowski. Let's start with Beneers for one. Just signed the mega deal. The seven by seven year, $50 million contract, I think it was. Uh, So you're paying him to be a top performer on this team. And of the 13 games that the Kraken have played, he has scored in five of them. He has points in five of the games and in those five games one of them he has three points including his only two goals the other four games he has just single assists it's just not enough it's not enough for a guy that you're paying to be a focal point of this lineup and on the burakovsky sky side of things six points in 13 games all assists and he is a minus six so far this season. And so you are definitely not getting enough from a guy that was brought in here to be maybe not a focal point of the offense, but definitely a complimentary piece to what Dan Biles was trying to build. And just not at this point, it's just, it is not enough from those guys that are, you are expecting to be key pieces. I mean, Jordan Eberle's got six goals. He had three of those in one game against the wild, by the way, Jared, McCann has five goals, but beyond that, you've got one player in Brandon Montour. He's got four goals. Three of those came in one game. And so it just, it is so like all in or nothing with this team. It's, it's got to change. And then Chandler Stevenson, who they paid a lot of money for a long time too. Uh, one goal and in seven assists. I know he's more uh, kind of known for his setting up and being kind of an assist guy, but still like, um, but I think that just goes back to it of being the, like this team just 
night in, night out. You you're either like you said, you're getting seven or eight goals and you're lighting up the score sheet, or you're not. And I think that's going to be the big thing for this team if they want to try to make a push to the playoffs. Here is can you just be a four, three or four goal a night team, right? Can you just score three or four goals a night and, you know, and see, because the defense has been playing like the, they've been doing a good job of holding other teams down and not giving up a lot of scoring opportunities and, you know, kind of keeping the goals low, which uh, Erica, our, our friend loves that defensively part, but uh, it's just, it's a tough way to live when you're, know like you have to try to scratch out goals here and there. And, you know, we can only score, if the offense is going, we have to basically be perfect defensively. It's just, it's a low ceiling for you to, to kind of work with. So, uh, but yeah, I think, I mean, it's probably also one of those early season uh, quirks right now, and it'll probably start to even out at some point, but it's just, it's, it's just weird. It's weird, right? It's a very, it's just an oddity. It's a complete oddity for this team so far. And it's a big reason as to why they currently find themselves lower in the standings than you'd like at at this point. And I I say this because this is exactly what the Minnesota wild had to do last year is it's just so hard to try to climb through all of the teams that are in the same spot to make it into the playoffs at the end of the year. Granted, there isn't a ton of separation between the teams that are fourth or lower in their divisions, Mm. but you're starting to see a little separation from those top teams. And that is where it just becomes more of a fight. And it's, it's not fun to be in that lower part of the, of the post or of the playoff picture. The Western conference has got the creamiest of creamy middles right now. It is. I mean, if the sharks are still kind of like somewhat floating around right now, that I think that tells you just how creamy this creamy middle is. That might be a good conversation for next week is trying to uh, shift through the creaminess. So yeah, there's a lot of mid, there's a lot of mid in the (laughs) West and the Nashville predators have the second fewest points in the West still who'd have thought, but Mm. we'll, we'll talk about them another day. We've got some uh, injury updates as well as trying to figure out how long the Edmonton Oilers are going to be without their star player. We'll talk about all that as we finish today's episode of locked on NHL after this. Price picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award prizes. Uh, Price picks has made daily fantasy sports successful to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to a hundred times your cash. Run your game all season long on Price picks. Price picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with injury insurance policy. Set your lineup, stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. So if your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Price Picks keeps your lineup live. Uh, sign up today and get fifty dollars instantly. So when you play five dollars, you don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollars bonus. That's guaranteed. With Price Picks, you can win money as your favorite players collect points. So if you think Macklin Celebrini tonight in his return gives you more than uh, half a goal, I think he's got it in him. Uh, you can pick more. On them, and your prize picks entry will turn your predictions into cash. So download the app today. Use code Locked On NHL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Again, download the app and use code Locked On NHL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Prize picks, run your game. One final segment of today's episode of Locked On NHL. And once again, we thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day. We are your team each and every day as well. JD, we've got uh, plenty of injuries so far this season. Obviously, it happens after our episode last week aired. Uh, Connor McDavid hurts. The expectation is that he'll be out of the lineup for two to three weeks. On, I think the uh, the low ends, he'll obviously be reevaluated as it gets closer. And if you look at what the Oilers have done since, they have uh, they've won a couple of games. I mean, they beat Nashville and Calgary. They lost to New Jersey in their most recent game because it turns out they have another guy in the lineup named Leon Dreisaitl, who is actually pretty good. I heard he was good. Uh, sources tell me uh, Leon Dreisaitl. 
is pretty good. Uh, I am working to confirm, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Uh, for Leah, was Connor McDavid the problem all along? <laughs> Seth, that's uh, Connor McDavid holding back the Oilers on today's episode of Luck. No, uh, yeah, I mean, when you have like, and that's what you see from great players, right? Is is when the team needs them the most. And right now the Oilers who've had a really poor start to the season, uh, lose the best player in the entire NHL, not named Kirill Kaprizov. And then, uh, they, you know, he puts on the Superman Cape, uh, dry Settle puts on the Superman Cape and it's like, guys, I'm going to carry this team as far as I can until McDavid gets back. And this is good news is it sounds like it won't be very long for McDavid, uh, until he's back in the lineup. Even last year, if you remember the beginning of the season, wasn't a hundred percent healthy and it took him a little bit to kind of get back into it. Uh, and then you compound that with a very long season and a very short off season. So you wonder if, and I know it was a freak accident with McDavid's ankle and the boards there, but like, you know, wear and tear of these long, uh, long playoff runs like you're bought in McDavid starting to, you know, he's played a lot of hockey and, and like, you know, it was, are we on season nine or 10 with him or whatever? But like, it's, you know, uh, if it, it feels like, uh, like, you know, you're going to start to see these things kind of pop up with him, but yeah, uh, dry side, although he's good. I think the Oilers will, you know, they'll hang in there until McDavid gets back. And I wouldn't be surprised when McDavid gets back if this team really starts to find their groove. Well, and at the end of the day, it's all about just keeping yourself in the hunt, keeping yourself in position. And the Oilers right now, they are certainly in position right now as uh, just they're tied with Vancouver for the third spot in the Pacific. So they're right in it. Calgary's right in it. Keep yourself in the conversation and uh, they'll make a run at uh, at the end of the year. I'm pretty confident in that. So the Colorado Avalanche finally get some good news because they are also in just a tail so far. They've they've allowed the most goals in the entire Western Conference. 51 goals in 12 games. That's more than anybody else. And that is. Well, actually, quick scan. That's the most amount of goals allowed in the entire NHL. Granted, it's by one goal, but still, 50, still. <laughs> 51 goals allowed in 12 games is that's not great. But they nope. get some good news, as it sounds like Arturi Lekkinen is ready to return, and that's going to help. That's going to help this Avs team. They still have a lot of pieces out of the lineup, but starting to get people back is a good thing. Yeah. No, especially because uh, Ross Colton, who was on fire to start the season, he's out now. You know, they have some other injuries that they're dealing with. So for them to start at least like plug one hole, you lose, you know, you got a hole break over here. You can at least plug it with uh, Lekkanen coming in, back in. So uh, hopefully he's, you know, kind of got everything figured out that he needs to get figured out here and kind of hit the ground running because this, this Avs team, like it's very much, we, we, Suggested it might be just Kale McCarr and Nathan McKinnon uh, dragging this team to wins. And that's kind of what they've been doing to start this season. So I think for them, any sort of help that they can get uh, would be huge. So I, I'm, I'm sure that's they're They're excited to have somebody in the lineup here. Yeah. And I, we, we talked about how bad Alexander Gorgiev was to start the season. And so it looks like you found something with Eustace Ananen. But then yep. then that fell apart. And I will note, too, and just looking at ESPN, Valeri Nishuskin back at practice as well for the Colorado Avalanche. And so if he can come back at some point, that's another big boost for this Avs team that is in desperate need of big boosts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like I we've said all year or all uh, the off season is just be in the hunt, get to the playoffs. And then this is probably the team you do not want to face in the playoff. That's going to be a great uh, treat for the wild to get like the second seed. And, and, and then, have you to know, <laughs> Colorado, that's just getting healthy. Uh, <laughs> I just made you really sad. I'm sorry. Uh, just <laughs> had to go there. Didn't you? Thanks. Thanks for that. What are um, the <laughs> I, yeah, I suppose that's the consolation at yes. this point. Um, you've got some Macklin Celebrini 
as you teased during the prize picks read, uh, it sounds like there is some Macklin Celebrini on the horizon. Yes, uh, Celebrini, who played the first game and has missed the next 12 games uh, with a lower body injury. Uh, he is expected to return against the Blue Jackets on Tuesday night. Uh, the Sharks team has kind of found their groove over the past couple, past week or so. Uh, they won three straight. They lost a really tough one last second uh, against uh, the Canucks on Saturday night. Uh, but like Celebrini enters this lineup, like the Sharks, again, they're not going to be a playoff team or anything like that, but their whole thing is just be competitive. Just try to be competitive this year. And with Celebrini entering the lineup, Will Smith started to find his confidence. Like, uh, you know, kind of feel pretty, pretty good, uh, at least about watching the Sharks night in night out. So um, yeah, I, I think for Celebrini, they were, the Sharks were super, 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 cautious with them and they should be right this is your franchise 18 year old kid franchise uh they were super cautious but they wanted to make sure he was 100 percent back to being healthy uh because again you're thinking about the next 20 years not the next 20 games with with celebrini so uh but yeah i fully expect him i know he's been itching to go uh ready to go and uh Back at practice, and I'm he's going to be taking over the top line with uh, you got Graylin and Toffoli. Got the yeah, so got the dad, the, the fun uncles watching over uh, Celebrini. And I'm yeah, gonna be good, gonna be good. Two vets and a Celebrini, yeah. Uh, my terrible attempt at a two men and a baby joke. Um, yeah, <laughs> to be a two men and a baby, there's a Will Smith, Will Smith and Macklin Celebrini dressed up like German tourists or whatever with like the Lederhosen, and then they're holding Alex Wenberg's baby for the Halloween party, and it's just a picture of three babies. So it's literally just three babies. Oh, boy. Uh, yes, it's it's I can't stop laughing at the photo. It is one, it is amazing. Well, Halloween, it was well. fun, it was fun to see all the costumes from the various players. Yes. That um, you you've got Jakob Lauko, who was the full Witch King of Angmar. Um, Mark Andre Fleury won, like he yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, yes, ten ten of ten, no notes, Jeez, just yeah. immaculate. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it for today's show. Appreciate everybody tuning in and making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We have a full panel of hosts throughout the week covering different NHL topics. So we keep it fresh. We keep it topical. We keep you in the know with everything going on in the NHL. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as parts of the Locked On Podcast Network.